Welcome to lunch with Trevor. We've got a kiwi. Actually, I should get my pastries out too. Well, I'm before I get too settled. Plus, you actually do important shit, so I'd be completely useless. What do you do? That's important. <laughs> I'm not saying you don't do anything important. I'm just curious what you're up to. <laughs> I'm just gonna put a sweater on for while I'm sitting, because uh, with the, the breeze we've got here uh, and it being overcast right now, I'm gonna get chilled pretty quick. Just trying to maintain my uh, comfortable temperature. Beauty. All right, kiwi, croissant, chocolate pastry. These are given to me for uh, for free. Uh, this guy saw me. He's like, "Are you traveling?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he's like, "These are donated. Do you want some?" I'm like, the, he said they're croissants and chocolate pastries." I'm like, "I love croissants." When I go dumpster diving, that's what I'm looking for, croissants. This is gonna be messy though. Hey Emil, you heard that Avicii died? I don't know Avicii very well. Someone else came in chat and asked me how I felt about it. I, I hadn't heard that he died, and like I know of him, but I don't know his stuff very well, so. Yeah. He's really talented, just not my vibe, yeah. Yeah, music is subjective. People enjoy different things, so uh, I'd never really got in into his music and so like by saying number two they might just mean number two most popular, most downloaded, most watched. So they can actually it depends on the metric they're using, but you can quantify number two, depending on what you're looking at. But yeah, you can't just say number two in the world, you kind of have to specify number two what? Number two by by sales? Number two by downloads on, or views on Spotify, or, yeah. Yeah, that's what you're saying, Jerky Mora, yeah. We're in agreement then. Now to those of you that eat kiwis, how do you eat your kiwi? I just eat it. A lot of people cut them in half and like scoop out the innards. I subscribe to the just eat the damn thing uh, methodology to eating a kiwi. Because I don't mind the fuzziness. And then you get most of the good stuff without like missing it if you're scraping it. Although I don't eat the ends, I have to chuck those out. Now technically I'd probably be okay just leaving those here, but still I, I still don't like littering even though it's like biodegradable, it's, it's plant material. I'll probably still carry them with me and um, throw them in the next garbage I see. Again, I like to leave stuff the way I found it. And this grassy area didn't have kiwi ends um, chilling here before I got here, so I won't leave any kiwi ends chilling here once I leave. This end is actually okay. It's this end that's a bit like the actual. Uh,
Africa. So number two based off of that stuff. I believe it. Don't know enough to uh, say one way or the other, but I believe it. But rest in peace to him. I agree, Scar. I, I had like briefly heard of him, but um, I didn't really know his music. Like, if I heard a song, I wouldn't be like, "Oh yeah, that's Avicii." Uh, but yeah, it, it's sad that he passed away, and um, I'm sure, the that whole music industry is um, going to be affected by that. I think the only time I've actually had a conversation with someone where Avicii was brought up was with an ex-girlfriend and there's that song where at the start they're like I took a pill and a visa to, uh, sh to show Avicii I was cool I'm like who's Avicii? I don't understand this, th these lyrics and they explained who he was like that was the first and only time I've really talked about <laughs> Avicii in my life so uh, that goes to show you how educated I am on this topic, and which means I don't really have uh, much input to add to it because that was my it, that's the extent of my knowledge. Croissant, I love croissants. I'll be it. This croissant isn't that good. I'll be it. Like, it's still good, but I'm sure like all of you have had like a like a really good flaky buttery croissant. This one's not flaky buttery. It like has the consistency of just like bread, you know. Let's YouTube the do see what's up. We can't do song requests because I'm straight mobile right now. Um, we do have a song request system set up, but it only works when I'm stationary streaming with my laptop as well. And we haven't fully tested that out yet. Um, I've got my friend Impact Velocity. He's doing everything in the background. Because I've never streamed before this. Um, he's set up the Discord. He's set up the song request system. And everything like that. So um, I just uh, don't have the experience to, to know how to do uh, song requests and stuff like that through, uh, through the phone. Otherwise, I would. Because I'm curious what, uh, yeah, what his music is kind of like. I don't, I'm sure I've heard his music. It's just never like, oh yeah, that's a beat you. No one answered my kiwi question. Come on, guys. <laughs> How do you eat your kiwis? We're just full on Avicii mode. Or Snickers mode. Sponsor me, Snickers. Hmm. Yeah, we'll be finishing up eating here pretty quick, and then uh, I'll be back on the road. Actually, while I'm here, I'm gonna see how far it is till the uh, the junction to the highway I'm taking. Twenty-eight. Yeah, that's that's brutal. That's really young. Yeah, nom nom. Sorry, I'm eating like a, a hitchhiker. I'm like probably chewing with my mouth open a little bit. Let's close my mouth. Let's eat like a civilized person.
try and see if I can show you. Wow. You cannot see my screen. Interesting. Okay, I'm not going to show you then. Or at least I can't see. It looks black pretty much from my point of view. Maybe if I use the rear camera. Let's see. Okay, maybe if I bump up the jam a little bit here. No, it's like on full brightness. <laughs> so now you don't get to see my map. Oh, yep. These are free. You can't beat free. Unless someone was paying me to eat a croissant. But I don't see why they would do that. Again, I just said I'd eat with my mouth closed, so... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you know my memory. Um, yeah, let's pull that up. I'm just going to pull it up uh, on my phone first before I give you guys screen view so we can look at it. Who the wind is chilly? Alright, here we go. Alright, so, what, like, if you guys have seen my offline screen or my, uh, my profile picture for my, my, uh, my channel, uh, that's artwork done by, by Watkins, uh, our friend from Wales, uh, and he made another bit of artwork for the channel, so let's, uh, show you guys what it looks like. It looks great, so I'm excited. Uh, let's show you guys what we got here. And again, thank you. It's so cool that you uh, do this stuff for the channel. Look at that. Welcome to California. And there's a Trevor. Look at that. I love it. That's really cool, man. Thanks for doing that. You just like creep, keep being so supportive to the channel. Really thankful for that. Like you've created like the branding on the channel essentially. It's the image. What do you guys think? You did see it though, I, I did turn on the, the screen correctly, right? Got some cool stuff for future, awesome. Awesome, I love it. We have a, another person uh, who talks in chat, um, goes by the name Madame Piggy. She also does artwork, she's doing some artwork for the channel too, so we're gonna have quite a bit of artwork being made which is which is really cool uh, yeah so thank you Watkins that's really well done I uh, I've never been a very artistic myself um, and uh, I think that's really really well done I could never do anything like that so uh, without people like you making that or me like contracting at work we'd never have cool images like that to represent the stream with and stuff like that. I'm just gonna finish the croissant and then I'm gonna walk out to the highway again. 
but we're pretty close to the junction. I'm not sure how far I have to walk up. I'm not sure if when I turn left onto this highway if it immediately becomes highway or if it's still town. I'll find out. It's a cold wind. It's a cold wind. Uh, looks like it's a bit of town, but it ends pretty quickly. And then we get into some uh, some proper wooded forested areas, which uh, we're gonna lose connection guaranteed, 100% guaranteed. But you will get to see who picks me up, meet them, and then we'll pretty quickly lose connection. Thank you, stay hydrated, bot. I've been trying to stay hydrated. Refilled my water bottle just uh, 20 minutes ago, and we're staying hydrated. Talking to a robot. Well, I'm really happy I did that hike this morning because the uh, winds really picked up and the clouds rolled in. So, so I'll, I'll check, make sure we're not supposed to get any rain right now. I think we're good though. Yeah, my thing's, albeit my weather thing is saying it's sunny right now. And I challenge that notion because it's not sunny right now. It's in fact pretty clearly overcast. Um, but it says zero chance of rain. But my trust uh, for weathermen is, is limited. Now that we're in California, there's so many options of places to go, directions to take, and eventually I'll be branching off east. So I really have to decide what I want to do. I'm just looking at a map of California right now, deciding where I... Not really deciding, just pondering where I want to go. It's tough. Racer man now hosting a stream with 63 viewers. Wow. I better do something. Thanks for hosting the stream. Uh, for you, those of you just tuning in, uh, this is Hitch Live. I'm a Canadian guy that likes hitchhiking and I'm hitchhiking around America showing people what the process of hitchhiking is like. Uh, I've done it for four years. I've been, uh, I've hitchhiked through 25 countries and I've been picked up over 700 times and I've had an awesome time doing it. <laughs> yeah, better do something. <laughs> Thanks for hosting, I appreciate it. Uh, so 
So the purpose of this channel and this trip is to show people uh, the experience you can have hitchhiking. Uh, like I said, I've done it a lot the past these past four years, and I've had a, an amazing time doing it. Um, you just meet amazing people. You go to really cool places. You do things you wouldn't do if you were traveling under your own volition. Uh, so yeah, the purpose of the trip is to show people the experience you can have. Um, this is day 11. I've been picked up 24 times so far. I started in Port Angeles, Northern Washington. And yeah, 24 li rides later, we're now in um, Fort Bragg, California. So, done pretty well. Uh, had a lot of fun along the way. Uh, but without further ado, I, I'm going to uh, actually do what my title says and, and hitchhike. Uh, we're hitchhiking to Willits. Uh, which is on Highway 101. We're currently on Highway 1. Uh, if I head south out of Highway 1, we're not gonna have any connection for probably a couple days of traveling. So, uh, unfortunately, beneath, between here and Wilts, we're gonna lose connection, but we'll get it back when we get back to the 101 uh, and then continue heading south. That's been the, the trip so far, is hitchhiking south down Highway 101. It's kind of your quintessential hitchhiking thing, hitchhiking south to California. But we're in California. We're back on the road. I hope you guys uh, like the stream. It's a bit different content, <laughs> for sure. I don't know if anyone's hitchhiked uh, in a live stream before, but um, I really enjoy it. Hope those of you that are watching enjoy your time here. Uh, the junction where I'm heading east uh, to Highway 101 is coming up pretty soon, so. It's going to be a brief walking stream, and then we'll be a hitchhiking stream again. This is Hitch Live after all. I better do some hitchhiking. Yeah, thanks for Iceman for the post, that's really cool. Watching the stream for a couple days, pretty fascinated by it. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, like hitchhiking, it's an obscure thing. Everyone knows what hitchhiking is, but not really many people do it anymore, and it has a really bad reputation. So, <laughs> that's kind of why I'm doing it. I've had an amazing experience doing it, and I, uh, I want to show the world what it can be like. Hitchhike all the way to Asia? Well, <laughs> I'll give you a history of, hit, of my hitchhiking. Like in the 25 countries I've hitchhiked, well, across Canada four times, uh, around Europe for four months through like 20 countries. I hitchhiked across Russia from the Latvian Russian border to Vladivostok on the East Coast. Uh, hitchhiked through Japan. I hitchhiked across Australia from uh, Gold Coast up to Brisbane, up to Rockhampton Strait west across Australia, um, through Alice Springs and all that, then down to the south coast, then up the south coast to, to Perth. Uh, last fall I hitchhiked through uh, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, Maine and Massachusetts on my way to Boston. So I, I have hitchhiked in Asia a little bit. I hitchhiked from, well, across Canada, flew to Europe, hitchhiked around Europe, across Asia, to the Pacific Ocean, and then flew to southern Japan, Fukuoka, hitchhiked to Tokyo, 
and then flew home. Um, so I've kind of <laughs> hitchhiked to Asia, except it's the bodies of water that are most difficult. Grand Puka, thanks for following. Hope you enjoy your time here. We're uh, going to be hitchhiking pretty soon. It's not this junction, but I think the next one where I'll be turning left uh, and taking the highway to Highway 101. Um, yeah, the problem with Highway 1 is that the, the network is just not there. I have an antenna on my back. That thing on the top of my backpack is an antenna, which helps a lot increasing the signal I get. But if there is no signal, there's nothing you can do about that. There has to be something there to increase. Uh, and in the middle, like riding along that the cliff side of that is the coast, there's no signal to increase. A lady who's killed hitchhiking through the Middle East, I have heard about that. Um, yeah, I don't know what to really comment on it. Bad things have happened with people hitchhiking, but bad things have happened to people doing everything. Bad things have happened walking down the stairs of your house. Bad things have happened going for a swim in the lake. Um, shit does happen, we just hope it doesn't. And people think hitchhiking is a very dangerous thing to do. It's not going to be as safe as taking a bus, plane, or train from point A to point B. But it's not as dangerous as people make it out to be. And many nice personalities picking you up. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about hitchhiking, is the people you meet along the way. Um, really cool people. Really generous people. Uh, people that see a stranger standing on the side of the road uh, and they go out of their way to help someone just standing there pretty much saying hey I'd appreciate a ride so that's yeah you meet a lot of cool people okay you gotta clean up shop so I'll be back later if you're still on awesome well, I really appreciate the host um, yeah, and I'm glad that you enjoy the content of the stream you find it interesting uh, I haven't checked out your stream before, but I'm sh I'll be sure to pop in and say hi. Um, so, yeah, thanks again. We'll see you later. I think it's the uh, junction up here where... Oh. Chunk Tech, thanks for following the channel. Hope you enjoy yourself. We're gonna be hitchhiking up. I think uh, left at this kind of intersection here. I think is where I'm heading. <laughs> nice to see the sun stayed. Yeah, forecast called for straight sun, and uh, we lost the sun. Albeit technically, it's more comfortable to, when you're hiking with a 60-pound backpack and all that to uh, to be walking in overcast weather. It's just not quite as it's just not as hot to be uh, when you don't have the sun beating down on you. So, in fact, walking right now, it's it's more comfortable to have no sun. But uh, once you stand still, and now that the wind's picked up, it's uh, yeah. I'm just happy it's not raining, because it rained the first like nine days straight on this trip. Everything was wet all the time, and there was nothing I could do about it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, as long as it doesn't rain. Knock on wood if I had any wood to knock on. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, this is the Highway 20 junction, so junction between Highway 1, going north-south, and Highway 20 heading east. And I'm still just going to blame you, like, most of the time. I'll, I'll kind of show you what I look for in a hitchhiking spot. I don't know where our spot's going to be yet. Uh, I just kind of walk until I find one. But uh, there's three things I look for in a hitchhiking spot. Uh, that's a long line of sight so people can see you from a long ways away. So they have time to make that decision. Uh, I look for a wide shoulder so that uh, they can safely pull off of the lane of traffic. And find some, 
so they can actually pull over and not be in danger of uh, getting rear-ended by a, a car driving past. And the third thing I look for is uh, slow traffic. So ideally they're not going highway speed, you know, like 80 miles an hour past you or 120 kilometers an hour. Someone's got a really screwed up car belt on their vehicle. Um, that's what I look for and I'll kind of show you. Usually you don't check off all three of those. Like sometimes you're on a highway and there's nothing you can do about that, but you find somewhere with a decent shoulder and a decent line of sight. Sometimes you check off all three, which is awesome, but usually you don't. The thing with hitchhiking is you don't get to really pick. You just, uh, you deal with the cards they, uh, they throw at you. And I know, 40 people. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a host, so. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Host from Racer Man. So, really appreciate that from him. We're out on Highway 20 now. I know you, like, the town doesn't really end here, so it's a question of whether I want to keep walking. I can already see a spot that'll be good. From here, I'll show you when I get closer. You just won't be able to see that well when I turn the camera around right now. Um, I'll probably try hitchhiking from there for a while. It's got a good line of sight. Still slow uh, city speed traffic and uh, a wide enough shoulder, so I'll try hitchhiking there. We are kind of still in town. Uh, Usually it's better to get to the end of town. Uh, what time is it? Alright, it's blocking my thing. 1.40 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. My screen isn't very bright, that's why I had to uh, shield it. Yeah, 1.40 p.m. Hey, you? Devante, you're only one hour ahead of us on the west coast. <laughs> I feel like you've already started your 420. Have you ever been picked up by a semi-truck driver? Yeah, you get them. Uh, not, that co not that frequently. Uh, most commercial trucking companies uh, ban their drivers from picking up anyone, hitchhikers or family members or anything, um, because uh, it, they say it's an insurance liability uh, reason. And that kind of makes sense. The driver's insured, the truck's insured, but everything else is is not, so. It's 9.41 there, p.m. Yeah, so are you, uh, Western Europe? Wait. Yeah, whereabouts are you at? I, I think this is really cool, because as I'm hitchhiking around the United States, uh, like I've had people from countries all over the place uh, coming and talking and chat and stuff like that, and I think that's, uh, I don't know, I think it's great that technology has given us the ability to kind of do that. You can watch me here in the United States hitchhiking around and talk to me uh, while you're on the other side of the world. England? Okay. I was there uh, three years ago. I got in a little bit of trouble. So I got dropped off in a place where I wasn't supposed to be hitchhiking in England, on the M6 North. Uh, but yeah, when a semi-truck driver does pull over, it's usually pretty good because you know they're going a long ways. And, uh, and they're really comfortable. <laughs> like the seats are usually on air, so when you go over a bump it's like kind of just like it's its own suspension um, so yeah stay at motels I've stayed inside a motel twice on this trip usually I like never spend money on accommodation I live out of my tent which is on my back that's my home that's where I live I've also uh, had places with people that have picked me up uh, two nights so far all right, so I'm gonna try hitchhiking here for a bit. I'm gonna show you guys the spot. So this is what I see as cars come. So long line of sight from the lights where I walked from. 
You see this? So that's a wide pull out, a wide shoulder. So that's a, a good spot. So it's got long line of sight, a wide shoulder, and we're still in town, so people uh, are going slow speeds. So that's kind of what I'm looking for in a hitchhiking spot. Um, it's a good spot. We're just still kind of in town. Yeah. So, scariest thing you've had to deal with hitchhiking? People's driving. You, you drive with enough people, like new people, as a passenger. And you're gonna get some real shit drivers, like just really bad. Um, and the scariest moments I've had is when uh, people pick you up. I talk to people before I get in their car, so I, I kind of like talk to them. They seem all right. I get in, but you don't get to see how good of a driver they are until they start driving. <laughs> and there's been some terrifying drivers. There's a guy pulled over, but he pulled over before I even started hitchhiking, so I doubt he's pulled over for me. Unless I see his uh, reverse lights come on, I'm not going to run up to his truck. Yeah, he's pulling off now. We're good. Um, but yeah, I, I sleep in my tent most nights. Uh, it's a little one-person tent of Marmot Tungsten 1P, which is beautiful because it's a nice neutral green color. Tents are usually fluorescent, but for my camping purposes, I prefer to be a, a more, a less, a less noticeable color. So, uh, yeah, I love my tent. It's just been slept in several hundred nights, so uh, it's not as waterproof as it used to be. Not as waterproof as it used to be. And for those of you that are just tuning in, what's going to happen here is the signal in cities here is okay. And then as soon as you get even a couple miles out of town, it disappears. It's not like there's bad signal, there's no signal. So uh, pretty much what's going to happen is someone's going to pull over, pick me up. They're going a decent ways. You're going to get to see that person, see what they look like see them for maybe a couple minutes and then we're gonna lose connection and we're gonna lose the stream for until I get to the next major place on Highway 101 which is the town of Willits I think and then we'll have signal again uh, so unfortunately between here and the next town we're gonna lose signal um, that's just the way it is on some of these roads uh, but uh, yeah I hope you guys come back once we do lose signal because we'll uh, keep it we'll keep hitchhiking south through California until we run out of south, then we'll go east. Pediatric. Thanks for following. I'm guessing that's how you want me to pronounce the name. Pediatric. But how's the day going? The day's going great. We did a nice coastal hike uh, in the, uh, the town of Fort Bragg here this morning when it was beautiful blue skies and uh, no uh, wind. So it's gorgeous. Um, if you want to see that, there'll be a, there'll be a video up there uh, where you can see. Uh, so it was a beautiful day. Did a few kilometer long hike. Went to Glass Beach, which has a bunch of uh, like broken glass that essentially has been weathered by the ocean, so it's smooth on it. So it's uh, good for beach combing. So did that, and then we uh, walked back into town. Got some groceries and. Uh, now we're hitchhiking again. Araxia, thanks for following. Hope you're enjoying your time here watching Hitch Live so far. Uh, we'll probably catch someone pretty soon. The thing with hitchhiking is you just never know. Taffy73, thanks for following as well. Uh, I could be, this car right here could pick me up or it could take two hours. That's the unknown factor. And when you see me waving to people, quite often that's the other wave to me or they did a few different little hand signals which is them telling me that maybe they would pick me up but due to the circumstances they're not going to um, so one of the uh, I'll show you when there's a break in traffic that guy did it right there so that guy just went like this which means he's local he's staying pretty local he's not going anywhere far so it's probably not worth the ride uh, this means the same thing short distance uh, so people either point to be like I'm staying local or that means you're going a short distance. True power moves. Thanks for following. Hope you're enjoying yourself. But I'm having a great day today. Did a hike today and now we're doing another thing I love, which is hitchhiking. Uh, 
and you're probably noticing that every car goes by, I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at the car. And I'm also giving them a little bit of a, a little bit of a nod. Uh, I don't know if you've like walked down the street and had someone nod at you or nod at someone, but it's almost, you feel like, like a social interaction has been had and you, you almost feel like you have to nod back. It's like socially expected. But when you do that, you've kind of broken the social barrier. So uh, anyway, I'm looking where the driver would be if I can see them. I'm looking at the driver and I'm pretty much just acknowledging them by giving them a little bit of a nod. Uh, seeing, I see you, I acknowledge you. Rather than just staring off into the distance with a thousand yard stare, uh, I'm just showing that I'm, I'm actively here. Pediatric, that's correct. This is super interesting, best of luck to you. Well, thank you, I need all the luck I can get because hitchhiking is very luck based. Albeit, it's also how you present yourself. You still have that tungsten one? I do, uh, and it really needs to either be like refurbished, like retreated, or I really need to get a new one because uh, it's not as water resistant as it used to be. Uh, let's see. Have you ever been in a car accident with someone that picked you up? No, but I've been in lots of close calls. Uh, yeah, lots of close calls. They're flying. Was yesterday your longest ride from one person on this trip? On this trip? Yes. Actually, it depends when you say where you count this trip starting. I technically started this trip from, from Kelowna, British Columbia. Uh, Petrol and Nome, thanks for following. Uh, I started this trip from uh, Kelowna, British Columbia, which is central, and then I hitchhiked to Vancouver, took a ferry to Victoria, and took a ferry from Victoria to Port Angeles. And I got a ride direct from uh, Kelowna to Vancouver, and that's 300 some odd kilometers. It's, it's a three and a half hour drive. Um, so that was technically the longest ride on this trip, but that wasn't on live stream. That wasn't part of Hitch Live. That was just me positioning myself to get into the US to start this trip. Uh, so yeah, the ride with Sam yesterday was the longest ride I've actually had on this trip of Hitch Live, Hitchhiking America. Um, so yeah, we're going to call that the longest ride. Ever hitched a motorcycle? No, I haven't, but I think that would be pretty cool. I have hitched some uh, interesting vehicles. I hitched a ride on a school bus in Ireland, an empty school bus, by a guy named Patty. Uh, I got picked up by the Lithuanian military in like a military Humvee type thing. That was pretty cool. They were they were really nice. Um, I, any other, I got a ride on a, a boat across a lake in Ireland. Uh, so that was uh, pretty fun. But uh, usually it's just cars and pickup trucks. Although not in Europe, you don't get many pickup trucks in Europe. Especially full-size pickup trucks. Like, the biggest you'll see is like a Ford Ranger kind of thing. <laughs> Those were like cool to have when I was in England. Like, one of my drivers picked me up in a, a Ford Ranger and he was really proud of it. So, the type of, types of vehicles you get is uh, very geographic based. Around here in the northwestern uh, U.S., I've been picked up by a lot of pickup trucks, as people that have been watching the channel have, have seen. Lots of pickup trucks. She gave me a, this. Carry any kind of insurance? Yes, I always travel with travel insurance. No one expects to get injured, but if you do, it's really best to be prepared, because I do not have the finances to actually pay for uh, extended hospital stay in any country, let alone the United States of America. Yeah, uh, lots of friendly people here. You can tell by the proportion of people waving or giving you hand signals what kind of place you're in. And a lot of people are like giving me signs that they're just going a short distance, so. Uh, I'm guessing it won't take too long. But, kind of to be expected based on my location, uh, a lot of it's local traffic. You're getting a lot of people going like this, or this, or this. Just being like, we're local, we're not going anywhere. Um, so, probably not worth the ride. 
Yes, Avicii has been brought up several times, so I am aware. Um, this might be dumb, but where do you sleep? I sleep in a tent and I sleep, um, you know, like, at the end of the day, once the sun goes down, I'll just, like, walk in there and set up my tent. I try to not sleep on private land. Uh, when I camp, I follow the leave no trace principle. Uh, as soon as I leave where I'm camping, you shouldn't be able to tell I was ever there. I don't have a campfire, I don't leave any trash. In fact, I have a bunch of trash in my pocket that I was supposed to actually uh, throw out, but it's still on me. So, I don't, uh, I try to respect uh, the places I'm staying. I'm a guest in America, I want it to look just as good or better from me being here. Hey. Can't stay long, just seeing how you're doing. Greg's good to have you in chat. Greg's my step bro. Karak Matar. Out of fire. What's going on, brother? How's everything going? Everything's going great. Had a great day today. Did a nice hike along the coast. And uh, now we're hitchhiking again. It was sunny in the morning, but now it's overcast. But this is actually, if you really want to look at it objectively, overcast weather like this is the best weather for hitchhiking because no matter where the sun is, if the sun's up, people can see everyone. Like if the sun was like low on the horizon back there and uh, people are driving and if the sun's in their eyes, they can't see me. I'm a silhouette, they can't see. Uh, with high overcast, even if the sun's low on the horizon, everyone can see everyone. It really is the best conditions for hitchhiking. Um, it's just kind of nice to be in the sun sometimes. You don't make a fire? No, I don't. Uh, I like maybe it's fine to have a fire but I wherever I camp I'm there just to sleep that's that's all I'm there for um, by the time the Sun goes down I'm pretty exhausted from the day of hitchhiking and all I want to do is sleep uh, so I set down my tent and that get that's like 8 8 30 right now where I am so I set down my tent climb inside set up my sleeping pad sleeping bag and go to sleep and then I wake up at first light which is right around 6 right now uh, and I pack it up and I continue on with my with my day my travels Nice already made it to Fort Bragg. Yeah, I got here last night uh, Overnighted here in uh, Fort Bragg and then yeah checked out the town a little bit today And now I'm uh, continuing on we're on highway 1 right now or Fort Bragg is on highway 1 but I'm trying to reconnect back up with Highway 101 because they're going to have a lot better signal over there. And the purpose of this trip is to show people what the process of hitchhiking is like. Uh, and to be able to show you, I need internet connection. I need Verizon signal. Um, so that's why I'm doing that. I'll be at, as soon as I get a ride and go that way, I'm going to lose connection. Uh, the gap between here and the next town is, uh, there's no signal at all. So we're going to lose connection. Uh, and then I'll be out for... 40 minutes, an hour, or something like that, and then I'll be back.